Well, good afternoon, Michiganders, and Happy New Year. It is Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024, and of course, this is Tuesday with Tom, Michigan's only weekly podcast where we do answer your questions about estate planning and estate settlement in Michigan, and we don't send you a bill. As always, I'm your host, Tom Doyle, estate planning attorney, lifelong Michigan resident, and ambassador for all things good in this great state of Michigan. Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's program. Well, if you're a regular listener to the program, you probably know that I took a little time off at the end of 2023, recharge my batteries, think about what we're going to be doing in 2024. Some of those things are going to include an updated website uh, that we're actively working on and uh, a list of hopefully many individuals who will be guests on the program talking about various topics that would be of interest to you. But my last episode at the end of October was to know the limits of your power of attorney. So if you have a power of attorney and you're wondering what sort of limits you have, I would invite you to listen to that last episode. Today, though, first program of 2024, I'm going to spend some time talking about law updates, things that are changing in 2024. But as always, please remember what I'm about to discuss during the program is, as always, for educational purposes It is not intended to be legal advice. You need to work with your attorney and tax advisor to determine what is appropriate for you and your estate plan. So change of the law in 2024, and I'm going to start with federal estate tax exemption. That's the amount of money that you, or amount of assets, total estate that you can own at the time of your death before you have to worry about a federal estate tax being paid. In 2024, that number is now for a single person $13,610,000. That means if you're a single person and you die in 2024 and you do not have an estate that exceeds $13,610,000, your estate will not owe any federal estate tax. For a married couple, that number basically gets doubled to $27,220. So that's a lot. Those are sizable estates that people can have in 2024 and they're not going to have to worry about federal estate tax being due. The concern though, because we're looking ahead, is in 2026. So you have two years before we're going to be in 2026. Under the current law, in 2026, those significant federal estate tax exemptions that we have now are going to expire. And when they expire, they will drop down to what they were before the law was passed that caused those amounts to go up. So a single person in 2026, that number is going to drop down to $5 million. For a married couple, that amount is going to drop down to $10 million. Now, between now and the 1st of 2026, the IRS will calculate an inflationary factor. So we're not really sure what those amounts are going to be, but they'll start at $5 million for a single person, $10 million for a married couple. So projecting out two years from now, and that's what we're beginning to talk to our clients about, You might not have a federal estate tax now. You might not have a federal estate tax in 2025. But if you're going to be looking at a significant federal estate tax, which can be 40% of your estate in 2026, now's the time to start thinking about what are your options? 
what are you going to be able to do between now and then? Now, maybe, maybe you're not going to pull the trigger on any of the options, but you need to start thinking about planning options for to have them in place before January 1st of 2026. Good news, the concept of portability is still going to be available for married spouses. That concept, again, is if I have an estate and I only use up a portion of my federal state tax exemption at the time of my death, I can pass on the balance of that federal estate tax exemption to my spouse. The other federal tax that somehow, that now the federal estate tax exemption, we usually talk about death, but it's also an overall gift tax exemption, which has to do, it's a unified credit which means you can either this year die as a single person with 13610000 or give away 13610000 and not owe a gift tax. But in the gift tax area, the exclusion that we normally think about is how much can I give somebody in any one year before I need to worry about either reporting that gift to the IRS and or possibly paying a federal gift tax or at least notifying the IRS and making an exemption to defer it till later. Well, in 2024, that federal gift tax exclusion amount is now $18,000. That means you can give any one person during 2024 assets totaling $18,000. And as long as you don't exceed that amount, you don't have to worry about federal gift tax. It's estimated that that exclusion amount, because it does get adjusted for inflation, will be $19,000 in 2025. So looking ahead, 2026, if you've got an estate that's, that's going to be too large, might be subject to federal estate tax exemption, possible consideration could be to look at using gifts of $18,000 or less as ways to shrink the size of the estate in 2024 using gifts, again, if it goes up to $19,000 a piece to shrink the size of the estate in 2025. That's why you need to start looking at what options might you have available now and how do you start using those options? Because obviously January 1st, 2026, you can't go back and retroactively make gifts in 2024. You can't go back and make retroactively gifts in 2025. So you should be talking to your financial advisor, your attorney about what strategies might be out there that you will consider looking at to shrink the size of your estate. Another area is in the area of IRA contributions. Every year we're looking at new IRA contribution amounts. Well, in 2024, it's gone up a little bit, up to $7,000 a year. But if you're looking, if you're age 50 and older, you've got that catch-up contribution ability, which makes it $8,000. So if you're under 50, you can give $7,000 to your IRA. If you're over 50, you can actually increase that to $8,000. Now, if you've got a 401k plan, similar type plan, 403Bs, etc., the contribution limit for 2024 is 23000 An area that has had a potentially significant change for, all, for many of you is in, is in 529 plans. And hopefully you're familiar with 529 plans. I've had previous episodes of the program about what 529 plans are, a way to set aside funds to pay for college, etc., for uh, children, grandchildren, etc., as in the past, tuition in a, as in past, 529 plans can be used to pay for tuition at accredited private public colleges, universities, community college, trade school, graduate schools, professional schools, wherever those happen to be in the United States. Additionally, for students who are in college, you can use your 529 plans to pay for things like books and supplies computers, software, internet access, room and board, at least if you're a half if they're a half-time student and special needs equipment. Now in addition over the last few years some changes to 529 plans have now allowed up to $10,000 of money in a 529 plan to be used to pay off a student's student loans. So that can be helpful in using the money for that as well. 
as well as you can use up to $10,000 to be paying towards the cost of tuition at K through 12 schools. So maybe you've got a child or grandchild who's in private school, K through 12, you can, you can put a 529 plan together, use up to $10,000 to pay for that K through 12 tuition. But the change, the change that's occurring in 2024 has to do, it's a result of the SECURE Act. Don't worry about what that stands for. But the change due to the SECURE Act is now in 2024, amounts that are sitting in those 529 plans can be rolled over. So if they're not used for tuition, they're not used for college, they're not used for cost of higher education, you still have money sitting in those plans, they can be rolled over into a Roth IRA for the beneficiary of the 529 plan. Now, there are some limits on it. One of the limits is that the beneficiary has to have owned the IRA for at least 15 years. So if you've got a child out there who's got an IRA and they've had the IRA for at least 15 years, that would be eligible to roll over unused funds that are in the 529 plan. You cannot exceed in any one year the Roth contribution limit for that year. So if you look at the Roth contribution limit and, and if it's $7,000 this year, that means you can't roll over more than $7,000 uh, in 2024. The beneficiary will also have to have, have earned income at least to the equal, at least equal to the amount that you are rolling over. And currently there is a $35,000 lifetime limit. However, for some clients, the ability to roll over some of those unused funds, because in the past, the option was, well, we're done with college. We've got money sitting in this account. If I take the money out, I'm going to have a 10% penalty on it. You now have the ability to roll over some of those funds potentially into a Roth IRA and avoid the 10% penalty that would be assessed on taking the funds out, as well as the taxable consequence of taking the funds out. Michigan. Let's talk about something specific with Michigan. There's a couple of areas that I want to at least bring to your attention in the probate world. When we're looking at probating the estates, we look at having under the probate code what are called statutory allowances. And those are things like the family allowance, the spousal, spousal allowance, and the exempt property allowance. Those are certain amounts that the probate code recognizes are distributed out, out from an estate before we actually get to distributing the balance of the estate. Those allowance amounts will go up in 2024. Every year, uh, the Michigan Department of Treasury issues its new regulations indicating what those amounts are going to be for 2024. And the other amount that will be going up in 2024 is once you get past those allowances, if you have an estate that's going to a spouse, there's a certain amount of the estate, what is the spousal share that they are allowed to receive, perhaps before other people are going to receive it. Maybe that's going to be children, stepchildren, uh, or children and parents, and that amount of that spousal share will also be increasing in 2024. Again, those are not amounts that you plan for. Those are simply amounts that are going to be effective when we are looking at probating estates. The big change, though, in Michigan, that's going to be coming, and we're not exactly sure what's going to end up resulting. It is on November 7th, 2023, the governor signed a new statute and under that statute, Michigan adopted what is called the Uniform Power of Attorney Act. The purpose of the Uniform Power of Attorney Act is to try and create powers of attorney that are uniform throughout the country so they can be used as you move from state to state. But we adopted this new statute. It does not become effective until July 1st. 2024. So it's not effective right now. It's not applying right now. Under the new statute, though, there are going to be some changes to the requirements 
in order for a durable power of attorney to be what we call durable. And durable under a durable power of attorney means that it would continue to be effective relative to your named agent, even if you become incapacitated. And that quite frankly is the reason most clients have durable powers of attorney is they want something to be in place that if they become incapacitated, that their agent can manage their business for them. So there's gonna be some changes in the requirements that make durable powers of a attorney durable. There's also some changes in the statutory requirements of what, what sort of uh, re, uh, acknowledgements have to be in the durable power of attorney that your agent is gonna to have to understand and agree to. There's actually under the statute a form for these new uniform powers of attorney uh, that are going to be where attorneys are obviously at our stage working on how do we take our current existing powers of attorney and adapt all of those to the new statute. But the question, the unknown, the uncertainty is this, how are your banks and your financial institutions going to treat your existing powers of attorney? You already have an existing power of attorney it doesn't become invalid simply because of the new statute, because it was created before the statute existed, but it is unclear now how banks and financial institutions are going to treat those existing powers of attorney. Are they going to allow them to be used or are they going to insist that they will only recognize powers of attorney as of July 1st, 2024, that are created and executed under the new statute. This is similar to a problem that we ran into with banks and financial institutions. The last time powers of attorney were changed where we had to start adding acknowledgements of responsibility to them, banks and financial institutions began rejecting the use of a power of attorney that did not have an acknowledgement of responsibility section, even though the statute said that powers of attorney that were in existence before that statute took effect were still legally valid. As a practical matter, we're running into our clients we're running into with banks and their financial institutions simply refusing to accept them. So between now and July, which suggests that you consider when you're at your bank or at your credit union or you're talking to your financial advisor or working with a financial institution, now's the time to start checking with them to find out, are they going to be willing to accept your existing power of attorney if it is ever needed to be used there? And if not, not need to start looking at between now and July 1st, once we have decided or lawyers have determined what these new powers of attorney are going to look at to having updated powers of attorney in place for you. So I kind of went through things fairly quickly, but that's a summary of what I see are the most important legal updates that are facing us in 2024. Again, federal estate tax, federal gift tax, IRA contributions, 401, 529 plans, and what you can now do to roll those funds over. In under Michigan probate court, statutory allowances and the spousal share under interstate succession, but probably the biggest one that's going to impact most of you is really going to be because of Michigan's adoption of the new Uniform Power of Attorney Act. As always, if you have any questions about these changes, how they might be impacting your estate plan, or if you haven't put together an estate plan or you're looking at having to amend a plan that you already have, as always, Amanda and I would be honored to have the opportunity to help you either by putting together an estate plan that you don't have or perhaps amending an existing plan or assisting you and settling an estate. Again, simply go to our website, doylelawpc.com. There you will find information on how you can schedule either virtual consultations, those would be by Zoom or telephone, wherever you happen to be.
be in this great state of Michigan, as well as in-person consultations, if that's what you would like to have at our East Lansing office. Again, too, don't forget that we have the legal store at the website, doylawpc.com. And through the legal store, you are able to order individual documents, perhaps just a new healthcare power of attorney. Uh, you can order that all online and have it prepared and delivered to you online as well. Well, that I think is going to be it for today's show. And as always, though, if you have a comment about the program, a topic that you'd like to have me discuss, questions that you'd like to have answered, please send me an email, tom at tuesdaywithtom.com. Follow us on Facebook. Uh, invite your friends and family to follow us on Facebook. That's Tuesday with Tom, as well as the office, which is Doyle Law PC. Remember, too, Tuesday with Tom is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, probably anywhere that you normally listen to podcasts, you will be able to listen to Tuesday with Tom, as well as by using your smart speaker. Well, thanks again for spending some of your time with us today. And as always, I hope that you have an awesome day and an awesome week in Michigan. Stay safe. Tuesday with Tom has been brought to you by the estate planning attorneys at Doyle Law PC. To learn how we can help you with your estate plan or with settling a loved one's estate, please call us today at 517-323-7366. That's 517-323-7366.